Last time on the MacCast, we helped a listener with suggestions for cleaning and optimizing a growing photo library that was stored on an external drive. And as always, following episodes, I get great feedback and tips and other information from those of you in the community. And I wanted to share some of that follow up with you uh, in this episode. Keith wrote in to say there's a great feature if you use Pixelmator Pro that really helped him out when he was working on a scanning project. Um, I will have a link to Pixelmator Pro in the show notes at maccast.com. I want to say it costs about 50 bucks. It is a great application, great alternative to Photoshop. If you haven't checked it out, you definitely should. Um, But he said when you're using the straightening and cropping tool in in Pixelmator Pro, there apparently is a checkbox setting that says delete cropped pixels and what this does is actually after you make a cropping it gets rid of the cropped pixels so we had been talking about the fact that photos you know it keeps that history it keeps that original uh, so you can always go back to it pixelmator has a similar kind of feature when you're cropping where it can keep all of the extra stuff outside your crop um, and your straightening. But if you really don't need that and you want to save some storage space, you can use this option and then it will actually uh, destructively basically crop that image if that's what you really want. And so in his scanning project, Keith would scan, bring it into uh, Pixelmator, do all the cropping and straightening there with the delete crop pixels option on there, which would reduce the size of the file. And then he would import that in to photos. He mentions that if you are doing this for a scanning project, you probably also want to disable Pixelmator's setting that converts your imported photos into the Pixelmator file format. There's a setting a checkbox for import JPEG, PNG, and TIFF images. So you'll want to double check that setting as well. Daniel also emailed me to recommend that another place you might want to check for large files is inside the video album. So photos will bring in videos from your iPhone and other videos. And as you might imagine, videos can take up a lot of your storage space. So you might want to check and make sure you don't have any just like extra videos are like I sometimes take those ones where I just accidentally hit the video button when I meant to take a photo and then you have like a couple second clip of really nothing nothing you really want to save so you could remove those you could also archive some of your older video files and that'll likely save a lot of storage space and uh, he also mentioned that since this particular this particular listener was storing his photo library on an external hard drive that if he wasn't already using an SSD, you might consider updating to an SSD drive from a standard hard drive to get better performance. Because he specifically mentioned that the larger the photo library got, the slower it was getting. So you might be able to just, you know, straight upgrade from a spinning hard drive to an SSD and eliminate that problem altogether. Uh, Obviously, SSD is going to cost you a little more per uh, gigabyte, but something to look into as the prices the prices of SSD drives have come down and continue to come down. So definitely we're checking that out. And then Josh asks an interesting question to ponder uh, because he was thinking, you know, it would be really great, and I think this is something we talked about in that episode, to be able to just eliminate all of the photos that are maybe blurry or not high quality, maybe they're cropped badly and those sorts of things. And he says, you know, with all the AI technology out there surrounding photos, uh, how come we can't just find blurred photos? And he thought to do something that I thought was pretty smart because, you know, uh, photos now has that feature where it can detect certain kinds of images. So you could type dog or cat or bird or flower or tree or mountains or beach or whatever and it will find those photos if you use iCloud photo library and so it can actually find that photo those photos and it's because it uses AI technology to go through and analyze the images Josh said why can't it find blurry images and I thought that was really interesting the only thing that I thought or the main reason I thought it might not work or be very difficult is that Photos often are intentionally blurry, especially in the background. Think of portrait mode and bokeh, right? People want that effect, or sometimes you blur images 
just for artistic effect, but you still could just use that as like a filter to kind of find all your blurry photos and then just get rid of the ones that are actually just bad photos. Um, it'd also be cool, like I said, if it could find poor cropping, you know, it does do the face detection and it can tell where uh, people are in portrait photos. So maybe if someone's face is half cut off, it could show you all of those images and maybe you don't want those. Uh, so auto identifying them and just sort of grouping them so that you can then filter them by hand could be really, really helpful. And it's not a feature that Apple has in there right now, but maybe it's something they could add in the future. And there was a thought that maybe there would be a third party app that could do it. But Josh did a little looking. I did some looking myself and I didn't find anything worthwhile. I think there is an app out there, but it's got pretty bad ratings. So if anybody knows of a photo app or a way to quickly identify bad or blurred photos in a photo library that works well and is a quality bit of software, let us know about it, maccast at gmail.com. This, this was a great example of a bunch of really great tips and tricks and and conversations that came up after we talked about something here on the maccast so if you have something to add to this conversation great shoot me an email send me an audio comment maccast at gmail.com